Jacqueline from Project Most here. Today we're going to be doing one of my favorite outdoor activities that's really easy to do and you don't need a lot of materials. It's a micro hike. Here's what you need. It would be great if you had a ruler or a tape measure, but if you don't, you can even use the edge of your notebook because we know a ruler is 12 inches and that's how long we're going to be hiking. And so the edge of a notebook is 11 inches, so it's just a little bit longer than the edge of your notebook. You can even use a sheet of paper, just plain white paper, or construction paper. Most paper is about 11 inches long. The second thing that you need is a pen or a pencil or something to write with. And if you do this activity and you record your results, please make sure that you post them online on our Facebook page so we get to see it. So. Ideally, you'd be recording it on a piece of paper so that we can see what you found in your micro hike. The other thing that you could use, but you don't necessarily need, is a, a, a magnifying glass. I have a plain magnifying glass and I have a snake magnifying glass that's really nice and big. This lets me get really close to things if I want to see them in more detail. But if you don't have a magnifying glass, that's okay because everything you need to see is visible with your own eyes. So. You need to pick someplace safe where you can kneel down or sit for about five or ten minutes. So don't do it um, in the road where there are cars, but you can, I'm in my front yard, you can sit in your front yard, you can sit in your backyard, you can sit on the edge of the street, you could go to the beach or a park, some place where you can find a good 12 inches to examine on your micro hike. It's a micro hike because instead of a long hike where you would hike for 15 minutes or an hour, you're going only 12 inches, only the length of this ruler. So it's micro, tiny. I looked around my yard and I found a spot that I thought had a lot of really interesting things to find. And I'm going to record those things. I want to find about 10 or 15 things. So what made me choose this spot is that there's an ant hill here. And I always like watching the ants because I'm really curious what they're doing. So I'm going to place my ruler near the ant hill. I don't want to put it on the ant hill because I don't want to disturb whatever they're doing. So I'm placing it near this ant hill. They're part of my hike without me disturbing their house. And I'm going to label my notes my micro hike. Now if I want, I can start like a journal entry and do this every day or once a week and I can record it with the date and I can come back to the same spot or I can choose different spots in my yard, but I can make it like a micro hike journal if I want. I'm also going to number one through 10 or one through 15, depending how many things I want to find. This lets me record it. These are the results that I would post online. So when I start, I'm going to start at one end of the ruler and I'm going to go slowly hiking with my eyes down the length of the ruler. Now the first thing I want to write about is this ant hill. So I'm going to write ant hill and you can't see it because they're so tiny, but I can see the ants on this ant hill are small black ants. And I'm making a note of that because I've noticed over time that there are different types of ants in my yard. I've seen the small black ants. I've seen medium reddish brown ants. I've seen larger black ants. I've seen really big black ants. I don't know the scientific names for these ants, but I do know that these are the small ones. So this is their home. This is their ant hill. The second thing that I'm going to record is right all around the ant hill is moss. Now when I look out of my yard, the moss just looks like a green patch to me. But when I take my magnifying glass and I get a little closer, or even if I don't have it, I can see it with my eyes, this moss looks a lot like feathers, like feathery fingers or something. So feathery fingers is how I'm describing this moss. And it's kind of a yellowish green. Sometimes moss looks really dark green or bright green. This one's yellowish green. So if I hadn't gotten this close, I would have walked right past it and just thought it was plain, plain green. Not the feathery part. Now I'm moving down. So that was the first inch. 
and the second inch. And right on top of my ant hill are oak, um, oak pollen strands, I'm calling them. These are the things that I see all over the place in the springtime, and it's probably what's making this yellow pollen on everything, on my car, on my deck, um, on my windows. So I'm calling it a strand, and I don't, I don't know that much about these, but when I take a closer look, I can see that instead of just a, a brownish squiggly thing, it actually has all these little tiny flowers that are kind of bell-shaped. That must be where the pollen was and it released them. So I'm also gonna put that in my notes. So oak pollen strand with bell-shaped brown flowers, maybe? This is something that maybe I should do some research on. You know, it's the, it leaves the yellow pollen everywhere and every spring we say, oh, that yellow pollen's everywhere, but maybe I should know more about it. So this might prompt me to do some research later. So I'm moving on very slowly because I don't want to miss anything. I'm moving down the ruler and the next thing I'm going to record is some sand. What's interesting is that this sand is, it's clearish white, almost like broken up Quartz. And that's really interesting because it's right next to the pile of brown ant dirt. So it looks very different. I see a little brown ant pile, and then I see the white sand sitting on top of some brown soil. And then every place else is this green moss. So it's clear like quartz. Hmm, interesting. I'm going to keep going. Now I can look at the top and the bottom of my ruler. I don't need to just stay below, so I see up high is some lichen. Now I've seen this growing on my trees. I see it on a tree right over there. It's kind of pale green, flat with wavy edges, lichen, pale green, flat and wavy edges. This is something else I could look into. I'm sure there are all different kinds of lichen. In fact, if I look around at my trees, the stuff on this tree is different than the stuff on the bottom of that tree. So I bet there are several different types. I bet if I research um, lichens in the Northeast United States, I'd come up with some pictures and I'd be able to identify the very specific type of lichen this is. All right, so I'm moving on. I'm at inch five of 12, and I've got five things already, coincidentally. The next thing I see is the root of a tree. So I have an oak tree in front of me, and there's this really long root. Maybe you can see it comes down into a Y shape. My ruler actually touches both roots, but I'm just going to say oak, tree, root. It's really interesting that it's above the ground instead of under the ground. I don't know what makes roots grow on top of the ground instead of going deep. I know that this tree is really tall, so it definitely has a lot of roots down deep, but why did this one choose to stay above the ground? I don't know. And just past me, it goes underneath. So it stayed up above the ground for a while, and then it dove down. This other part, right where my knee is, it goes into the ground too. This is a bit of a root mystery. And what's really interesting is on the root, so tiny that you can't see it, are these little tiny red ovals, like a rusty, rusty red things. I think they're bugs. I think they're... There may be eggs or maybe they're mushrooms. I don't even know what they are. I really need to do some, some research again. Even with my magnifying glass, I can't tell what they are. So rusty red oval specks on root. That's the best explanation I can come up without doing some more research. But you can bet I'm gonna look into this because I'm really intrigued. They're not moving. There's a whole bunch of them, maybe like 30 of them, and they're very tiny. Maybe the biggest ones are two to three millimeters. The smallest ones are about a millimeter. I can tell because my ruler is right next to them. 
I've never seen these. Well, I've never noticed these. So I'm really interested. All right, number eight, let's see. So I'm moving on and I see ah, a little green weed. Now these green weeds, right in the middle, so small they're not blooming yet, are the starts of purple flowers. So they're little tiny purple buds. So I'm going to say green fuzzy weed with small purple buds. I've seen these weeds in my yard before and they make pale purple flowers that are so tiny you can't even tell that they're flowers. So that's how I know it's a flower bud. But it's very tiny right now, like the size of the tip of my pen. Okay, that's eight things. I'm going really slowly and I'm taking time to notice what's along my ruler. I also see a red maple leaf. Above me, you probably can't see it, but above me is a Japanese maple tree. And this is one of the leaves. It's a little curled. If I opened it up, you might be able to see it better. They're beautiful. I really like this tree. So I'm gonna put that on. Japanese maple leaf. Red. Mm, dried. Looks like it's on its way to be very dried. Half of it's dried and wrinkly and half of it's still flat. I think it just fell off the tree recently. All right, one more to go. So I got to the end of my ruler and I didn't find anything really fascinating, so I'm actually doubling back to see if I missed anything. And I'm taking my time. And here I found a small, oh, it's trapped in my moth, in the moss. A small dried up piece of grass. It doesn't look like it grew here. It looks like it blew over. And it's kind of like a tannish color. Dried grass. So I have 10 things that I found on my micro hike. I could keep looking and find 15 if I got really close. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the most interesting thing on this list and circle it. I found these rusty red oval specks are the most interesting things because I don't know what they are. And they're really making me wonder and I want to do some research. So I circled it and I am writing most interesting, interesting, what are they? I'm gonna have to look this up. So when you do your micro hike and you record your results, when you're finished, please look at your list and make a note, circle it, and say, what was the most interesting thing that you found on your micro hike and why? I hope you find something that's so compelling that you want to find out more about it. Post your results on our Facebook page at Project Most. We would really like to see what you found.